it's always wild when you're out for a hike and you see something like that and you think, you know, would this be the moment that that falls and kills you? <laughs> you never know in this life what random act may take you out. Let's get a view. I wanted you to see this portion of the trail. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at that. Don't you wish you were me right now, even though, well, you don't want to wish you were me because then you'd, you'd be in pain. <laughs> but, but at least I'm enjoying the day. And the damn bugs are out again. I'm gonna have to stop and put my bug, bug screen on. Anyway, watching the world burn, watching the world burn. October 27th, 2024. Let's get into it. You know, I, I guess I, I'm just going to try to hit on a, a few things. I had a comment. Guy said, uh, he says, well, you know that the North Koreans aren't fighting for Russia. Well, <laughs> you know, this person must not watch my video. You know, if you're going to make a comment on my videos, at least watch the damn video. I never said the North Koreans were fighting for Russia. Now, they are getting training in eastern Russia, if you didn't know. Perhaps this person doesn't know. Russia shares a border with North Korea and they bring them over and uh, they put them through their military schools or they do joint, joint exercises, you know, because you've got to learn, you know, perhaps someday to integrate those forces. There's no way the North Koreans could ever fight in, in Ukraine. Number one, they don't speak the same language. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's kind of like in the Marine Corps. You know, let's look at Korea for just a second. There were Korean, I mean, there were Marine Corps divisions, and then there were Army divisions. If you wanted to take an Army division and integrate it with a Marine Corps division, I'm telling you, it wouldn't work out too well. They're not used to working together. They have different styles of fighting. They have a different purpose. So no, there are, there might be a few mercenary Koreans, or Koreans fighting, but you know, and then I, I was watching some stupid four-star general he was talking about the fact that since Koreans are fighting for Russia, this shows how, how depleted the Russian ranks are. What a flipping idiot. Oh my God, I was thinking, this guy was in charge of like the European command or something like that? I don't know, I mean, I was, I was like, oh man, no wonder we lost every single war <laughs> since the World War II. You know, we've got nothing but stupid people leading up the military. Yeah, just for example, why is the military allowing the Democrats to destroy the United States? You know, if, you, if you're working at the Pentagon and you're, you're supposed to be, you know, looking out for the security of the United States, when uh, that traitor, Mayorkas, started uh, flying down to, uh, you know, the Panama to uh, help the people get into the United States, was providing them with buses, meals, cash, uh, cards, uh, phones, you know, and then of course that, that wasn't enough. So now they, you know, once the, the Texas kind of cracked down on the border just a little bit, I still say Abbott's a Democrat, but uh, so it became more difficult. So then they just started flying them in. Well, that's treason. That's treason. You're bringing in an army. Most of those are, are fighting age young men. So what? Is, why is the Pentagon or the military allowing the United States to be destroyed from within? So that tells you that there's a lot of traitors in the, uh, the high ranks of the military. I dare say, you know, probably if they are our patriotic machine, not woke Marines. By the way, I don't know if you, in my previous video, I did that advertisement with a full metal jacket. I just want to say it, that is as close as I've ever seen to someone uh, doing the, um, a, a, a valid depiction of the, um, of Marine Corps basic training. So that was that would be a good video for you to watch. I always want to get the weird stuff on the video. What in the world is a bike doing chained to a tree in the middle of the woods? I mean, there's nobody around. Anyway, it was funny. I was making the video and I walked right off the trail. <laughs> that, was, that was leading me into a fire break when the actual trail goes this way. I just thought you'd find that humorous. Getting back to just talking about things, another comment that I get is there's somebody trolling me. They think they're going to make money off of me. Oh, the quality of your videos is fantastic and we can help you uh, get more uh, people watching your videos. Well, that might be so. 
That might be so, I don't know, but I can't afford to pay you. And if you know what, if you want to offer up the service for free, and if it worked out, yeah, you might get a little bit of money, but quit trolling me. All right, whoever you are, if you ever watch this video, uh, or it might be multiple people, you know, yeah, I could use some help, but I, I can't afford to pay for it. And unless I see some results and then, you know, then you might get some money. All right, because most of my money goes into uh, my video equipment and bills, you know, I got debts. Uh, so I can't afford to be out here marketing, paying for marketing. I just do the videos as a hobby for the most part anyway. Oh, uh, getting back to the, I did a video, definitely want to check it out. It was my tribute to uh, the Madison Square Garden. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if you knew that the Democrats came out and said, oh, you know, back in the 30s, there was a Nazi rally at Ma Madison Square Garden. Therefore, all the MAGA people that are at the rally, all 20,000 of them. And that was, that was inside. I think there was a lot more outside. God, can you imagine pulling down those crowds like that? Oh, they were saying that obviously MAGA supporters are, uh, are you know, Nazis. Hello, New York! Join me as I say these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As we gather here today on this historic occasion, we stand together as proud Americans in understanding that these very rights are under attack. So we face this historic crossroads where our freedom and our future is in our hands. There's never been a more clear choice in any election in my life, and our ability to live in a truly peaceful and free and prosperous country is on the line. I love you too. And it is that love, that love that brings us together here today, that love for freedom, that love for our country and love for each other as fellow Americans, as children of God, that compels us to take action to save our country and defend our freedom. Now, this choice that we have before us is very personal to me. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve. I've served now for over 21 years. I've deployed to different war zones three times over that period, and I've seen the cost of war. For my brothers and sisters who paid the ultimate price, I carry their memories and their sacrifice in my heart every day. So this choice that we have before us as Americans is critical. It's important to us. It's important to those of us who serve, who have volunteered to put our lives on the line for the safety, security, and freedom of our country and our people. And it's critical to all of us. Here is the choice that we have. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for Dick Cheney, and it's a vote for war, more war, likely World War III and nuclear war. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for a man who wants to end wars, not start them, and who has demonstrated already that he has the courage and strength to stand up and fight for peace. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for open borders, where known violent criminals and Islamist terrorists are streaming across our borders, placing us at risk. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for secure borders and safe communities, and a confidence that he will seek out those who seek to do us harm and get them out. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for economic hardship, high cost of living, poverty, 
and homelessness, and a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for economic prosperity and opportunity for every single one of us as Americans. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for censorship and a complete erosion of our fundamental and constitutional rights and freedoms. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for someone who will defend freedom and every one of our God-given rights that are enshrined in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. So the choice is ours. History will look back on us at this moment for the choice that we make. Did we choose war or peace? Did we choose poverty or prosperity? Did we choose censorship or freedom? Most ridiculous thing I ever and it was a headline right out of the New York Times. I tell you, these rag mainstream media sources, I can't believe people even watch them. I mean, it blows my mind. I, you know, just, I guess they're just mostly Democrats. They're the only ones to do that. Another little tidbit for you was uh, I wanted to watch some of the Rogan thing. So I put in Joe Rogan Trump interview on YouTube, and this is how you get censored. That's what I keep telling people to go over to Rumble. My channel is The Burn on Rumble. But anyway, couldn't find it. I think this had, it's had like 35 million views, but you can't find it. It doesn't even come up in the search algorithm. So then I searched on uh, Joe Rogan interview with Trump. I tried some different things. Finally found it as the 16th offering down on the page. I mean, that's this is the number one interview. It's like Tucker Carlson when he interviewed Vladimir Putin. I mean, my God. And, and, and YouTube doesn't want people watching it. You see what I'm talking about? I understand... Some of you just, I, I'm guilty. There's, there's people that are actually just on YouTube, but most people these days are, have smartened up and they post their videos both on Rumble and on YouTube. Now the advantage on Rumble used to be that you didn't have the commercials, <laughs> but, but they've, uh, they've wised up. And that, you know, that's another thing I want to talk about Rumble just a minute. You know, they've really gotten a lot better. You know, it used to be that like I would, I, cause I watched Dan Bongino and you can only get him, wow. Look at this, huh? That's interesting. That wasn't there the last time I hiked this trail. This is a big, big tree, holy moly. Anyway, uh, well, I was just talking about the, the censorship, but on on, uh, on Rumble, if you, because uh, so, sometimes, you know, the, the, your connection will get lost and all of a sudden, you know, you got to start the video up again. Well, the advantage YouTube had was it always picked up where you left off. Kind of like uh, Netflix or any of the paid subscriptions, you know, they pick up, oh, Rumble didn't used to do that. <laughs> it, was, it always bounced all the way back to the beginning of the video. And I was like, no, man, I've already watched 20 minutes. I don't want it. And then you got to fast forward it again. And it was, but anyway, it looks like they fixed that now. And it picks up right where it left off. So, I mean, you know, I'm willing to suffer through the commercials. And usually it's only like two commercials right at the beginning. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that Rumble's doing commercials, but I think you can pay for the premium subscription if you don't have to use it free and then you probably don't have any commercials i believe i haven't tried it i might i, I might do it eventually so uh and then the, the other thing on rumble is uh you know the search engine's getting a little bit better it's still tough to find anything you know and so you really got to follow the channels that you want to see and that's the only way you can find their videos is go down your your list of people that you're following and that's where you get your videos but anyway, getting back to the Madison Square Garden just a little bit, my favorite part was Elon Musk. You know, he was, he seems like a, doesn't he, he's a tech dude, right? I mean, he just seems like a big kid in a certain kind of way. For the greatest capitalist in the history of the United States of America, Elon Musk. I'm not just MAGA, 
I'm Doc Gothic Maga. Well, it's the energy in this room is incredible. What a, what a what a great group of people. It's, All right, it's, I've only got one question for okay. you, and then I'm getting out of here because this right. is your stage. But we set up Doge. Yes. How much do we, you think we can rip out of this wasted $6.5 trillion Harris-Biden budget? Well, I, I think we can, we can do at least $2 trillion. Yeah! <laughs> yes. $2 trillion. I mean, at the end of the day, you're being taxed. You're being taxed. All government spending is taxation. So whether it's, it's direct taxation or all government spending, it either becomes inflation or it's, it's direct taxation. Your money is being wasted, and the Department of Government Efficiency is going to fix that. We're going to get the government off your back and out of your pocketbook. And I'm, America is just not, not gonna, just going to be great. America is going to reach heights that it has never seen before. The future is going to be amazing! <laughs> now, are awesome. Honestly, this is like... Ah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, th this is, this is like, this is the kind of positive energy that America is all about. Yeah. USA, 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 Fuck! Yes. Now, I, I have, uh, I have a, something I want to ask you to do, though, because obviously uh, we're, we're somewhat preaching to the converted in this uh, stadium, um, but there's a lot of people out there who. Uh, who need to vote for, for President Trump, okay? So, the, like, this is a real battle. This is a real election battle. So you need to get friends and family to, to vote. Make sure they vote. Vote early. This is important. We're, we're going to be putting up a scorecard, okay? An early vote scorecard, state by state, county by county. In their windows and they're like, why are you talking smack about Ukraine? We got to help Ukraine. Well, why we got to help Ukraine? What? what what difference does Ukraine make to the United States? You know who it made a difference to? The Democrats. It's, the, it's their money laundering. That's where they get all their money. They launder it right through Ukraine. That's why we sent $200 billion to, to Ukraine. Had nothing to do with helping the Ukrainians. If we wanted to help the Ukrainians, we'd end the war right now. Call up, you know, like Trump says, call up Putin. Say, look, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Get the best uh, settlement that you can at this point, because Russia's, you know, they could have settled this war back in 2022. But no, no, the Pentagon and the, these four-star generals and the Democrats, they want every Ukrainian to die. Now, I kind of got a theory about that. I believe that, you know, companies like BlackRock or Blackstone or whatever, the, the ones that they want to go in and think about it. If all the Ukrainians are dead, for the most part, you know, they could go in and just uh, gobble up those resources. Nobody's going to stop them. I mean, who's, who's going to be there? The Ukrainians don't, won't have a military no more. Hell, they probably won't even have police. The whole country's going to be in chaos. So they can just step right in there. So maybe that's what the plan is. To kick, I mean, the secondary plan. I mean, the first plan was obviously wanted to hurt Russia. Well, that didn't work out. So then the second plan was, okay, so what? We kill all the Ukrainians, and then we just go in and steal everything we can. So I think that's the plan right now. And anybody that's for that, you're an evil son of a bitch. I'll say it. If you're for that, you're an evil person, man. That you may have some satanic qualities. You might want to be looking down rather than up when, when your final demise hits, like that tree at the beginning of the video that might fall on your head. God will be up there going, nope, you're not coming this way. 
you're going down, not up. Anyway, the uh, and we'll talk about Israel just two seconds. Finally heard on the radio, they said, well, the well, the stock market's up today, obviously, and uh, the oil prices are down. So here's something you might want to take a look at, and I'm going to take a look when I get home. The oil stocks. Uh, because what they, they said on the radio, and I, I'm not sure I believe it, they said, well, you know, Israel tempered their, their response, and that, you know, so now, you know, they felt good about that. Everybody's feeling good about that. I'm not so sure they tempered it. I think it was those uh, air defenses that Russia's been given to uh, Iran that performed really, really well. I mean, I, I think without those air defenses, there would have been a lot more damage. Well, it would have definitely been a lot more damage. But, I mean, it, it could have brought about an Iranian response, and then you'd see oil prices way up. But that's, uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, nothing really new on Gaza. Like I said, they're all starving to death. So that makes uh, all the Christians happy in the United States and uh, the Democrats, of course. And uh, in Israel, they're looking to go in and they've already done maps to map out the Gaza area so that they can go in there and build condos on the shoreline. And they, I think there's some oil or gas reserves that are off the coast that uh, the Israelis want to get their hands on. So that would be a nice uh, boost to the Israeli economy. But uh, it was too, just sad that two million people had to die so they could get their hands on those resources. You know, but hey, like I said, I mean, at this point... In for a penny, in for a pound. If you're uh, if you're a Palestinian, and uh, you survive, you're gonna want to kill Israelis. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I would. So you know, you watch my mom die, my kids die, my my husband, my dogs, my house has been blown up. Yeah, yeah. If I survive, I guarantee you, I'd be I, my hatred for the Israelis would be a, a, on off the charts. So better better for the Israelis to kill all the Palestinians. Uh, because otherwise, there's that war will continue forever. No way the Palestinians are not going to get revenge if they're still around. So that makes all the Sean Hannity's and Mark Levin's and people like that that hate the Palestinian people. I don't. I don't want to see them all die. I would much rather have seen uh, a possible uh, attempt at a two-state solution so that the Palestinians have a place they could call home. And the Israelis, and maybe, maybe they could have coexisted peacefully. I don't know that for sure. Uh, I know that Gaza was just a concentration camp before the October 7th, so I, that was no way to live. So, I mean, for better or for worse, you can't blame the Palestinians or Hamas for trying to break out of that concentration camp and bring on a war. Boy, I haven't walked this trail since the hurricane. Look at the damage in here. I mean, look at that. Crazy, huh? Let's walk back a ways. I mean, I'm looking at all this stuff just snapped. Trees down right here, limbs off. Man, look back there. The hurricane. Wonder why it hit this one area so hard. Anyway, I wanted to get you a look at that tree. Look at that thing. Is that wild or what? That is one wild looking tree. Thought I'd just get a hiking clip because this is a really special portion of the trail. But look, more to de more destruction. Look at all this stuff down in here. Wild. Man. I wonder I, I got to thinking about that area. I wonder if there was a little mini tornado came down in there, you know, or just something, you know, on the borderline tornado, you know, because that happens during big storms. So anyway, I did want to just talk about censorship for just a minute. By the way, you know that if the Kamala gets in, we are screwed. There'll be no free speech anymore in the United States. And I imagine people like me, uh, well, you'll never hear from me ever again. <laughs> uh, maybe they'll let me live, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I, I did want to talk to that guy that keeps trolling me about my videos. Yeah, these videos are good, but you got to understand, I'm on the wrong side of either party. Obviously, I'm a huge Trump fan. I love the guy. I think he's a wonderful human being. I want to see him be president. Sunday night, I asked her to not stay up super late because of her coming to work with me in the morning for us to do her summer school. She said, okay. I told her good night and I love you. I went to bed, not realizing that that was going to be the last time I saw her. Huh? We're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go shake it again. <laughs>
I woke up to notice she wasn't in her bed. I'm in my heart trying not to lose my mind because I don't know where she is. I finally remembered her phone had a location on and her phone was pinging just two minutes down the road right behind the skate park. I start driving to the direction the phone was being pinged at and I see a couple cop cars with lights on. I see yellow tape and immediately my heart drops and sinks to the bottom of my stomach. My daughter's hands and ankles were both bound. She was strangled to death with left with no pants. And I know in my heart, she fought incredibly hard. She was not going down without a fight. We begin with two men. We're learning our charge with capital murder tonight, accused of killing a 12-year-old girl. Police say these men strangled her before dumping her into that creek. Both men were in the country illegally. Apprehended, then released by Border Patrol less than three weeks before Jocelyn's death. The men accused of killing Jocelyn Nungare are affiliated with the gang, known for brutal violence. Kamala Harris was in charge of immigration in our borders. If we had better border policies and not open borders and not these catch and release policies, I truly believe this all could have been prevented. Under her being vice president of this country, my daughter's life was ripped away from her. She had her entire life ahead of her. Happy birthday, dear Jocelyn. My daughter is six feet in the ground based off of policies that she allowed to keep. Kamala Harris did have one job and she not only failed, not me, she failed my daughter, she failed Jocelyn. You know, she was only 12. <laughs> President Trump reached out, gave me his sincerest condolences as not a former president, but just as a father, someone who cares. I believe Donald Trump needs to be back in office. I can at least know that my next child will be safe in this country. I think he'll do a good job. Did I agree with everything that he had in his first term? No. So that right there makes, uh, makes me on the wrong side of every single Democrat in the country. And then the other thing is I'm against war. I'm an anti-war person. I was against the war in Ukraine. I thought that that was a, a, fool's, a fool's war. I was all for you know the, the Russian peace plan, which definitely puts me on the wrong side of the conservative side of the house. And of course, I'm, I'm against the war or the extermination of the uh, Palestinians. And that puts me on the wrong side of the conservatives. So you see that there's no way they can ever let me uh, go viral or ever let me, my channels become popular because both sides don't like what I have to say. Okay, so that's, uh, hopefully that'll answer the question about that idiot that keeps trolling me about my videos. Look over here. This is new. I don't remember this right here, this post and that fence. Huh. Boy, I tell you. I don't walk a trail for a while, you get all kinds of new stuff. Got a bug bite me, sorry. Whew, man, a lot of debris. I'm heading back on a different trail. I had to work my way through the woods. <laughs> it, was, it was tough hiking. Let's, uh, let's hit some other topics real quick. All right, I wanted to talk about uh, Germany for just a minute. Uh, got a good video of Baerbach. Boy, I tell you, what an idiot that woman is. Oh my God, how can how could the Germans... Germans used to be considered smart, right? I, I don't know. I, the, the, somehow their leadership gets in there. They're the dumbest people around. Let's watch her getting off the plane. Now, notice that there's nobody to greet her. <laughs> I mean, when you look at, I used to, if you watch some of my videos, you've seen Putin land, uh, what was it, in the United Arab Emirates? Uh, and man, they had the, the red carpet out and troops all along the side of the thing. And uh, who was it? Uh, when Putin went to China, same deal. And when G. Uh, all the leaders, when they were greeted for the BRICS, they uh, 
they uh, you know got the red carpet treatment <laughs> and look at, and look at Baerbach. Let's watch that. All right, so that, that tells you what China thinks of the Germans. But let's talk about Germany for just a second. Now, the news, this is horrible news for the Germans, is Volkswagen, who's been around, good Lord, how long has Volkswagen been around, 100 years? They're shutting down three of their plants in Germany. That's so that they said that's like 10,000 jobs that are gonna be lost. Good, uh, you know, good paying jobs. So Germany's on its last leg and uh, you know, it, it's amazing to me. Now, I don't know if Schultz is just stupid or if he's just a puppet or if Baerbach is just stupid or just a puppet, but they were trying to blame Russia <laughs> for, for cutting off the oil. <laughs> I was like, what? Number one, you decided you didn't want the Russian oil first off. And then uh, because Biden was gonna make sure that you didn't go back on your mind, he blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. By the way, I, we're going to get on environmentalism here in just a second. That was the biggest ecological disaster I, in my lifetime, perhaps. All that, that fuel, that methane and everything just went right into the ocean when they blew up that pipeline. I mean, that, that could you, can you imagine the, the, the ecological disaster, the amount of uh, sea life? that that killed, that the Democrats killed, the Democrats who are supposedly for the environment. You know, if you, if you do watch the, uh, the Rogan interview with Trump, Trump was going on about the windmills. And he said that the, uh, the windmills, the ones that they have at sea, well, they, they only last a certain number of years. So, and they're expensive as hell. They're ugly as hell. I mean, Trump, you gotta, you gotta watch the interview, but he was going on about, that they makes the, the noise that drives the whales crazy. So the whales are beaching themselves on the shorelines because of the windmills. And then you gotta remember, uh, Biden shut down the Keystone Pipeline. And those are all Democrat union jobs. And uh, anyway, so I, I, but I wanna just talk about Schultz and he's blaming Russia for cutting the oil off. <laughs> Russia, did, Russia had nothing to do with it. In fact, they would happily sell their oil to, to Germany. And, well, I think they are get, actually selling it to Germany. It just goes through India at a much higher price. You know, India is exporting a lot of oil right now. Well, you think that India's got the oil? No, they're buying it from Russia and selling it to the Western countries because <laughs> they're too stupid to buy it directly from Russia. Oh my God, it's just, the world is upside down, isn't it? it but, uh, but I did want to talk about the ecology. I mean, think about it. All right, right here in Florida, we got a Republican state now. We got a massive initiative fixing our waterways. Uh, we've cleaned up, from what I understand, I wasn't here until 2017. From what I understand, the water quality in Florida was quite bad. And under Republican leadership, our water quality has gotten very, very good. You know, then you look to Michigan and they still got lead in their pipes, poisoning the people in Flint. For a long time, they were giving them bottled water. I don't know if they still are. I don't follow Michigan all that well. Then let's look at the fire hazard. Okay, every year, vast amounts of California go up in flames because they don't do fire management. Whereas here in Florida, when was the last time you heard about a big fire here in Florida? Now we have our hurricanes, no doubt about it, but we do fire management really, really well, especially here in central Florida. I, I could speak firsthand about the fire management. So California did fire management. Think of all that carbon dioxide that goes up in the atmosphere. The Democrats don't care. They keep saying they're the, the party of of the um, environment, right? They're not. They hate the environment. They hate you. They hate the American people. Let's get on to another thing. They, they want to promote electric cars. What do you think is in those electric cars? There's all kinds of batteries are made up of cobalt, all kinds of metals. There are slaves working the mines in Africa to provide those metals for the batteries for the electric cars, okay? And not only that, how are you going to recycle all that? You know, once those batteries go bad, what are you gonna do, put them in a dump? Talk about poisoning your water. You know, now maybe in the future, it's kind of like nuclear fuel. You know, we've never come up with a good way to, uh, to recycle the nuclear fuel. And uh, 
But, you know, maybe they figure in the future we'll come up with a way to recycle those batteries. So I'm not against electric cars, okay? I'm all for it, I, I, but we gotta do it in a clean way that's, that protects the environment, okay? Because that's not what we're doing right now. In fact, uh, they're saying the ecological damage from an electric car is actually, in the long run, gonna be worse than a gas car. Now we gotta get off of fossil fuels, no doubt about it. And there is some technology in China right now, some nuclear technology that we should be looking into that supposedly doesn't generate the, uh, the amount of waste like, a, you know, the, the old fusion nuclear power plants. These are the things we need to look into. Windmills, I, you know, I'm all for solar to a certain degree. Once again, you know, you're using a lot of silver in those solar panels. You're using a lot of, of metals. Uh, they're getting more and more efficient, you know, but I'm saying all hands on deck, all hands on deck. And I just want you to know the Democrats are not for the environment. I mean, just blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline alone would tell you, the, uh, the Biden administration's opinion of the environment. Here I am listening to the radio. Isn't it amazing how when I talk about something, <laughs> the fake news comes out and talks about it too, but it just shocks the heck out of me at how much they lie, lie, lie about everything. They're going on and on about how there's 20,000 Korean soldiers fighting the Kirsch region. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my lifetime. There ain't no damn Korean, Korean soldiers in the Kirsch. The Russians don't need them. They've already beat the damn Ukrainians. They've killed 25,000 of them. You know, so what What would they need a bunch of Koreans up there that can't even speak the language? I mean, and American people will believe this stupid shit. Oh, my God. I, I'm just like, then they said, oh, there's 600,000 Russian casualties. People, I can tell you right now, I've been following that war since day one. There is, I mean, there's definitely uh, in the millions of, of Ukrainian casualties, I can tell you that. But I don't think there's 600,000 Russian casualties now. Have the Russians had casualties? Obviously. And it could be as high as, and I, I think I heard a figure of 100,000, um, but I'm not sure. But uh, no, I, I, 600,000, that's just, that's a, that's like a, Six-fold uh, exaggeration. You know, they make it sound like the Russians are getting beat by the Ukrainians at this point. <laughs> and the war, I mean, the, the, the Ukrainians are falling back on, I mean, every day the Russians are, are increasing the amount of territory that they're taking. They're increasing the number of Ukrainians that they're killing. I mean, the war, to me, is just about over. And what, you know, but the thing that's going to get me, you know, is, is when... when Ukraine finally unconditionally surrenders because that's the only way this is going to end. I, you know, I, I just wonder what all these people that have been lying to the Americans, and, and I, it's just going to it's going to be just like the COVID, you know, or the um the, the the jab and all of that. You know, everybody's just going to kind of go, oh well, you know, I guess, uh, uh, you know, we thought it was this way, but you know, maybe we were they were wrong, I guess, and and they're not going to. Call them out and say, look, man, you know, you, you guys lied about everything. I'm not going to listen to you no more. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I, I, anyway, I just had to talk about that for just a minute. I'm on the, the home stretch of the hike. That used to be the dump right over there. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying the scenery. I just sometimes want to get my mug off the, the video and talk about things. So back during COVID, the PSYOP. This park would never get used. Look at that. It's packed. That's great to see. You think they remember how they were deceived and psyoped? Nope, they're just kind of moving on along going, well, I'm just glad we get to do this now. Should be mad. Should be mad.